It is claimed that internet use consumes a huge amount of electricity, estimated over 416 terawatt hours per year based on 2016 data. To put that figure into perspective, it's more than the total energy consumption for the whole of the United Kingdom. And energy consumption can only rise with the increased business and personal internet use. With this energy consumption figure in mind, how can we determine the carbon emissions from our internet use, such as Google searches, use of environmental resources, and from our own websites. A new website offers a solution to understanding and quantifying our carbon emissions from internet use. Let's take a look. Welcome to EMS Mastery, where we look at the strategies and tactics to be successful in environmental management. If we're meeting for the first time, my name is Andrew Marlow. Like many other businesses, our environmental and sustainability consultancy, One Planet Solutions, makes extensive use of the internet, covering the presence of our business websites, oneplanetsolutions.co.uk, and the environmental resources that we make available through the emsmastery.com website to our use of environmental resources at professional institutes, such as the Institute of Environmental Management and Assessment and the Society for the Environment. As part of the quantification of our business carbon emissions, we found a new and very valuable resource, which is both simple to use and provides a clear estimation of the carbon emissions and the context to your internet use. The tool is Website Carbon Calculator, which is designed to be simple and provide an estimate of website efficiency in terms of carbon emissions by testing the home page of a website. It uses five key metrics to estimate the carbon emissions. Data transfer over the wire. When a website is loaded, the energy used is roughly proportional to the amount of data transferred. Energy intensity of the web data covers hosting at the data centre, transmission on communications networks and by the end user's computer or mobile device. Energy source used by the data centre assumes that all websites use standard grid electricity for their communications network and by the end user, since there's no real way to determine otherwise. Carbon intensity of the grid electricity is based on the international average as reported by the International Energy Agency. Website traffic. With all of this information, it is possible to understand the carbon emissions associated with the average user visiting any given website. By multiplying the carbon per page view by the number of annual page views to that website, it's possible to estimate the total annual CO2 emissions for any given website. Using all of this data, the website carbon calculator estimates the emissions by using known data, some of which is one or two years old and is not specifically targeted at UK energy use. So it comes up with a good estimate for comparison purposes rather than producing a definitive carbon emission value. Nonetheless, I thought it would be good to try out the website carbon calculator and use it on some known websites and to see what was reported back. I chose three categories of site, environment agencies or regulators, environmental institutes and environmental consultancies. For environmental agencies, I ran the test on the four environment agencies in the UK, 
the Environment Agency for England, Scottish Environment Protection Agency, Natural Resource Wales and the Northern Ireland Environment Agency. With a comparison with other environment agencies, such as the German Environment Agency, the European Environment Agency and the United States Environmental Protection Agency. A comparison of the CO2 per web page in grams for each of the Environment Agency sites showed that all but one, the Environment Agency in Germany, had values of less than one gram, with Northern Ireland Environment Agency and the European Environment Agency at the lower end with 0.32 and 0.52 respectively. If the value for the German Environment Agency is correct, then at 5.85 grams, it's the most carbon intensive website to visit out of all of the Environment Agency websites. I next turned to environmental institutes, as these organisations provide membership support and environmental resources and are likely to be keenly used to access environmental information. All of the environmental institutes had higher estimated carbon emissions than the environment agencies, excluding the German Environment Agency, with the Institute of Environmental Management and Assessment being the only institute with emissions lower than 1 gram at 0.9 grams of CO2 per page view. Again, there is an outlier with the Society for the Environment with a significantly higher estimated carbon emission at 5.88 grams of CO2 per page view. Finally, I looked at the estimated carbon emissions for environmental consultancies, taking our own two websites, One Planet Solutions and EMS Mastery, as a comparison, which recorded lower estimated carbon emissions than any of the sites tested. Environmental consultancies have estimated CO2 per page view similar to the environmental institutes, but higher than the environmental agencies. An outlier is Stantec, with an estimated value of 7.27 grams of CO2 per page view. I have summarised the estimated carbon emissions for each of the three groups tested with their minimum and maximum values, as well as a useful benchmark of 1.76 grams of CO2 per page view as the average for websites that have been tested. It should be emphasised that the website carbon calculator is estimating the carbon intensity of the main web page of the website and is based on a number of assumptions which are necessary due to the complexity of the management of websites and their data transmission across the internet. However, it is a good point of comparison and brings us closer to the day when internet usage can be determined more accurately. As a bonus, the website Carbon Calculator has a link to an article on 17 opportunities to improve the carbon emissions in three areas design and content, development and web hosting. For design and content, it's all about the planning stage of the website or its revamp to ensure that you have the most efficient access to the website and its resources and not wasting carbon on an inefficient user experience or resources such as large images and video, which can add to the energy needed to load the web page. For development, it is more about the efficient use of coding of the website and the use of specific technologies and optimising the website to improve the delivery of its resources to the end user. And finally, website hosting, which can be fine-tuned to ensure that the server resources are cached so that they are readily available and more immediately accessible to the end user and are hosted in an energy efficient host closer to the end user. 
Further information on all of the documents referenced in this episode are given in the description box below, including a link to the resources at the emsmastery.com website. I hope that this episode has given you an insight into how you can start to estimate your website usage in terms of carbon emissions and have the opportunity to improve the efficiency of your website to ensure that it is more energy efficient and less carbon intensive in serving up resources for your end users. Please subscribe to this YouTube channel to ensure that you don't miss out on other episodes on environmental management and sustainability. Until then, thank you for listening. If you enjoyed this video, you can watch other episodes by clicking on the boxes in the top and bottom right, and to subscribe to this channel, click on the link to the left. Thank you.